think that the RBI will now reduce policy rate. Do you it's expect not that? just purely the inflation data, it's also the fiscal signaling that the finance minister has done. So I'm inclined to think that it will not be more than 0.5%. For the entire year, I think it will be very unreasonable to expect anything more than 0.75%. This particular financial year, I'm inclined to think that it may actually be higher. I know that economic survey has stated that band, but my band is 7.5 to 8 percent. It's not going to cross 8, but I'm inclined to think it will be more than 7.5. One reason is in 1516, because of uncertainty about devolution. There was the 14th Finance Commission, there were the recommendations of the subgroups of chief ministers. So in 1516, devolution to states was affected a little bit. That uncertainty is over now, and from 16 to 17, states are very clear about the amount of money they're going to get. And about almost 50% of capital investments actually takes place at the level of the states. So far as public expenditure is concerned in investments, you can see that improving for roads and you can you have begun to see it improving for railways. And these public investments also stimulate private investments. So I think with a time lag of about two or three quarters, private investments will also begin to recover, subject to the fact that in some sectors there is still excess capacity. Brexit, if it happens, will be a really major, major shock. It will be a major shock to the world economy. When one is looking at it from the point of view of India, there is an important issue, but that is a limited issue, that now that India is also integrated into the global economy, however imperfect that integration may be, there will always be volatility in capital markets and there will be vol volatility in exchange rates. So this volatility is a part of life, it will continue. The second element is managing the balance of payments. Managing the balance of payments is not the same thing as managing the trade account. So far as the balance of payments is concerned, we are reasonably comfortable. There is some amount of unraveling that is happening in China. And we still do not have very good data to understand the depth of that unraveling and the downturn that the Chinese economy is going to go through. So therefore, I don't think exports of goods are going to recover significantly in a hurry. And the way it impacts the GDP is I don't really see GDP touching double digits until the global recovery happens, which is of course very uncertain. It is a symptom, it's not the disease. The, the reason I said that is for most of infrastructure, investments are really financed through the debt route, not the equity route. The private costs of capital are always high and infrastructure projects take 20 to 25 years. Banks are singularly ill-equipped to handle funding for 20 years or 25 years. They used to handling working capital requirements for three years and things like that. And whenever there is a downturn in the economy, as is inevitable, all the revenue projections go haywire. So therefore, I don't think one can have a blanket solution. We are talking about management and reforming management in public sector banks. And I have a feeling that sooner or later we will see a shakeout in public sector banks. Some of them really need to be merged, consolidated. Exactly similarly, we are going to see a shakeout in the corporate sector. Whenever we have talked about bankruptcy, we have tended to equate it with bankruptcy for the corporate sector. The corporate sector is a very small percentage of Indian enterprise and one of the problems we have always had is for the unincorporated sector, we do not have, let us, let me call it the concept of limited liability. 
So it is very difficult to insulate the assets and liabilities on the enterprise from that of the entrepreneur. So when an enterprise goes into bankruptcy, the entrepreneur is also punished. Mm -hmm. This has been a long-standing problem. At least the bankruptcy code now enables a bankruptcy law for unincorporated enterprises as opposed to personal bankruptcy. So of course it's a desirable step. It should have been taken much earlier. to enterprises is that competition does not only mean entry, it also means exit. Unfortunately, the way enterprises in India tend to look at competition, they tend to look at it as freeing entry and are and almost refuse to accept free exit. My advice to enterprises is that please don't lobby to prevent exit, exit is part of life and this is not advice for CFOs. To CFOs, it's, it's not really advice. It is really a stating something that they already know that this world is a world of uncertainty. This is not a world where you can have the stability and the certainty that one was used to.